Good morning. Um, hello, my name is Evan Davis and I am a liberal um, first year liberal studies student studying at New York University, the Washington DC campus. Um, the John um, Romanda Center in NYU DC invite you to today's DC Dialogues webinar using in a, um, ushering in a new era of change and transparency, a conversation with Dominican president Luis Abinader. Um, a seasoned businessman turned politician, President Abinader represents a new era of leadership for the Dominican Republic, Caribbean, and Latin America. His business, education, and political careers have all been shaped by vocation and training in the Dominican Republic and the United States. After recovering from COVID-19 this summer, during the presidential campaign, Abinader went on to win the presidential elections this past July in the first round, receiving more than 50% of the votes. His election marks, uh, his election marked the end of the last 16 um, of 20 years marked by single party rule in the Dominican Republic. President Abinader most recently served as executive president of Abbey Corps, which has developed and operated major tourism projects in the Dominican Republic. This family group directed the business project of what is today the company of Cementos Santo Domingo, of which President Abinader served as vice president. So our moderator today, Giovanni Vincente Romero, writes an internationally acclaimed column for CNN. He is a Washington DC based political strategist, consultant and lecturer. Giovanni publishes investigative and analytical articles on political communication, democracy, development, human rights, governance, elections, the environment, and the role of women in society. He founded the Dominican Republic Center of Public Policy, Development, and Leadership. Giovanni earned a master's degree in political communications and strategy from the George Washington University and is a PhD candidate in political science and public administration at the University of Murcia, Spain. Giovanni is the recipient of the Dominican National Youth Award for Professional Excellence and um, it's the nation's highest honor for people 35 and under. So thank you for all, um, thank you for joining us today and start thinking of your questions now, start um, sending your questions to our Q&A box and we can't wait to get started. Thank you. Thank you everyone for the wonderful introduction. Good morning to everyone joining us in the United States and good afternoon to those tuning in from the Dominican Republic across Latin America and Europe. I'm Giovanni Vicente Romero, political strategist and columnist for CNN. On behalf of New York University and New York and NYU Bradley Mass uh, Center, welcome to NYU DC Dialogues conversation with His Excellency Luis Rodolfo Abinader Corona, President of the Dominican Republic, entitled Ushering in a New Era of Change and Transparency. New York is home to the vast majority of the 2.2 million Dominicans living in the United States. Also, NYU is home to a growing number of Dominican students. We are proud to host this discussion, which is important to our student body and community. Thank you to President Abinader and to today's audience for joining us for this important event. The first 100 days of the President, uh, President Abinader's government has been defined by an agenda focused on transformational reforms in the areas of public administration, transparency, universal health care, and the investment climate, all topics which we will learn more about today. We will begin with keynote remarks from President Abinader, followed by a dialogue with questions and answers from the audience. President Abinader, thank you so much for being here. The floor is yours. Hey, good morning to all. Thank you very much, uh, Giovanni, to you and to, to all attendees. And welcome to this meeting. We want this to be a place for analysis and debate on the future that is to come and the changes that we have already started to do in the Dominican Republic. Firstly, allow me to context <coughs> to ally some elements. So it becomes easier to appreciate the transcendental importance of the transformation that we are already implementing in our country, as well as the exceptional historical context in which these changes are happening. When we first presented our electoral bid to the Dominican people, the situation was quite different. The region's economic 
including ours, was growing. There was no global pandemic. And our only problems were inequality and corruption. The COVID-19 pandemic altered everything. Changing our country went from urgent to vital. A perfect storm was looming over our heads with a triple crisis, a health crisis, an economic crisis, and social crisis. If the government did not act well, we risked even an institutional crisis. Under these circumstances, we took office on August 16, a mere 100 days ago. I can assure you that from minute one, we have worked tirelessly to fulfill all our promises to the Dominican people and respond to the urgent needs that we have faced due to COVID-19. We have already started to make many changes and reforms. All our plans are in motion. We are working without the minute's rest to lay the solid foundations of a modern, competitive, and solidarity-focused Dominican Republic that places the welfare state as the main axis of its policies. In this short time, we have launched numerous public initiatives to control the virus, support and relaunch our economy, as well as to emerge a stronger and better position than ever before. We have put into action plans for the education se sector, for healthcare, for tourism, for large public-private investment projects, plans to reform the state, and we are discussing the 2021 budget. What we have done in our first 100 days aims at the clear message. This government will deliver fast and irreversible change for our country. These actions that we are uh, taking on all fronts represent a structural change in the way we conceive and implement public policies in this country. We act with urgency, yes, but we are transforming the structures with our actions. I will give you one example. Our government has included 2 million Dominicans in the National Healthcare Insurance, SENASA. In the context of a global pandemic, it was urgent to do so. But we had to do it now in a way that we would forever change our health insurance model. This is the most ambitious plan that any government has ever implemented in the health sector in the history of our country. We have achieved full coverage of our population and have established a public and universal health care system. This is probably the most revolutionary change in our politics in recent decades. Now, despite the urgency of facing the health crisis, we have not forgotten other areas. As such, we have taken action to revitalize export and tourism, to ensure education for all our youth during this pandemic and to promote industrialization. We have also expanded all social programs because as we said in the campaign trail, and I repeated during my inauguration a speech in this government, no one will be left behind. We are mobilizing an unprecedented amount of resources to overcome the difficulties of the crisis derived from the pandemic, but also to ensure that our people and our economy emerge a stronger and better position for the immediate future. The fact that we have presented these plans together with the stakeholders has helped to ease the impact of the crisis and also has facilitated a more optimistic investment climate for our country. <clears throat> everyone now knows that the government is focused on job creation and does everything in its power to help achieve that goal. Hence, why in these 100 days, we have had an unprecedented avalanche of productive investment in our country, spread throughout the territory and in all sectors. The world has no doubts that investing in the Dominican Republic is safe and profitable. Change is no longer an intangible perception. It is a verifiable reality. In addition to private investment, we are also mobilizing public resources. We have already taken the first step to build the Amber Highway in Puerto Plata, an, an, air an airport, and 3,000 rooms in Pedernales to make a new uh, region for tourism. We have also initiated 
the plans to modernize the Manzanillo port in Monte Cristi. Dear friends, the economic recovery requires that governments mobilize all the investment instruments within our reach. We must select wisely in which sector to make these investments and must do this fast. For this reason, we have also undertaken reforms and actions in recent months that substantially improve our institutional framework. We have eliminated parallel structures, superfluous organizations, and we are doing a survey of the entire government structure to see where the taxpayers' money was being spent. Now, everyone knows that public funds will be protected fully and no one will be able to waste a single peso without consequences. The government will act firstfully in accordance with the law and will support an independent judiciary. There is still a long way to go, but as you can see, we have already begun to take the first steps to transform the Dominican Republic once and for all. We are changing the country. We bet on the future with optimism, prioritizing decent employment and the welfare of our people. This is our goal, our shared change and our commitment to the entire Dominican people. Thank you very much and God bless you all. Thank you very much, President Abinader, for your remarks. We are honored to have you with us today and appreciate your taking the time to converse with the NYUDC community. And I will take expression from you. Nobody, no one will be left behind. And I think nobody or no one should be left behind. So now let's start off with a few general questions. And I'll do question number one. So the principal element of your presidential campaign could be captured in one word, change. Many Dominican people have been sending a message for change and your campaign effectively reflected this sentiment. How do you unite the country around this platform for change? <coughs> what are the defining features of the reforms in other words, <coughs> vehicles for change that the Abinader administration is undertaking? Yes, underneath all politics, there is an emotion and there's always a prevailing emotion in each particular moment. The emotion of change and hope is present at this time in the DR. People did not connect to the word change. Change was already in their mind. We only put lyrics to the music that was already playing. Our country had decades of inaction, failed reform, patronage, and large scale corruption. What we proposed was to reverse that trend with radical and irreversible changes. We proposed to the country a pact that was very simple. With your vote, we will carry out the transformation that you have been demanding for years, counting on you and always showing your face and explaining the objective and proposals of our policies. And let's plan alternative in all sectors. We presented the largest and most ambitious program of change, not only in those elections, but possibly the most important in many decades. Thank you, Mr. President. This is a very ambitious yet achievable plan of action for the new government. We wish your administration all the best on this. Uh, the cornerstone of your success is a commitment to promoting transparency and combating corruption. On day one in office, you appointed independent public servants to run the justice system and remove yourself and the presidency from influencing the trajectory of their investigations. The Dominican Republic ranks 137 out of 180 on the Transparency International Corruption Perception Index for 2019. What additional steps will your government take to improve transparency? Over the last 24 hours, we've seen a lot going on in the Dominican Republic, some developments in this area. What are you know, additional steps that you will that your government will take to improve this situation indeed we have him put in place an independent attorney general so that she is free and autonomous to make the decisions she deems appropriate and in accordance with the law 
there is no more patronage or corruption in the DR. Now, whoever wastes a single peso or public money must explain it and it is not in accordance with the law. They will be immediately dismissed and brought to justice, whoever it may be. Regarding the fight against corruption, we are reviewing all contracting systems to make them completely transparent and competitive. Adapt our legislation and homologate it with international standards. On the issue of transparency, <coughs> as I must say that my government and all its personnel have published their declaration of assets and those who have not presented, it has been immediately suspended. This government is committed to reversing that image and getting out of the ranking of infamy on corruption. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for these insights. Again, we wish you much success on this. And I'm really happy to hear that because as we say in the United States, no one is above the law. And that could be the case in every part of the world. So please describe for us what it has been like as the world's first president elected during the COVID-19 pandemic. How does one run a country during these unprecedented times? How difficult is that? We are affected with the first government elected in times of pandemic in Latin America. There were no precedents or examples to rely on. Already in the campaign, we were fully aware of the difficulties we would have, we would have if we won. But we already knew that we had been preparing for that moment for years. And we had the best possible thing. <clears throat> the response of the entire Dominican society has been exemplary. Everyone from minute one has stepped up with the government to overcome the crisis and come out stronger. The business sector, civil society, international organization, we have all rowed in the same direction. And that makes in these tough times easier to act and be more effective. Thank you. Fascinating. Actually, really fascinating. It is inspiring to hear how you over overcame the virus and are determined to eliminate this pandemic in your country. Dominican Republic recently unveiled a new global brand to communicate the country's attractive investment climate, export industries, tourism, and culture. How does the fastest growing economy in Latin America and in the Caribbean maintain this level of economic development and competitiveness during the COVID-19 period? Yes, uh, we have carried out intense work in all those sectors that you mentioned and that have made it possible to create a very favorable investment climate in the country. As an example, let me tell you that the monthly index of manufacturing activity, IMAN, of the Association of Industries of the Dominican Republic in the month of September reached the highest point of the last three years with 60.56%. This has been the second best year in IMAN's history since 2015. And this is not by chance. As I said, the government has deployed its full potential in achieving economic recovery and has placed a special interest in the reindustrialization of the country and competitiveness as key elements of the Dominican future. In yeah. recent weeks, we are seeing how many business groups are deploying a very broad activity, investing in our country and giving an unprecedented show of confidence. They are doing it in all sectors and in different regions. The reforms undertaken by the government will help the Dominican economy return in the short term to the levels of expansion recorded prior to the pandemic, which would allow it to close 2020 around neutral growth. In any case, international organizations, IMF, World Bank, ECLAC, have agreed to predict that the Dominican economy would be one of the less affected by COVID-19 in Latin America. We must take into account that the proven resilience of the Dominican economy to successfully overcome adverse shocks would facilitate a faster recovery than the rest of the countries in the region. 
I believe that despite the crisis, the fundamentals of the Dominican economy remain strong and we play a leading role in resuming the path of growth with stability. I am convinced that in these complex moments our nation is going through, we must all do our part to banish the historical pessimism that has been present in Dominican thought. Goodwill and a firm decision are required to face the challenges that lie ahead. All united, the public and private sector, this is very important, with a common goal of overcoming the crisis and resuming the path of development. It's clear to me that things are looking up for the Dominican Republic. The is open for business and its tourism industry is poised <coughs> for recovery. Many universities this year will be canceling a spring break, but there is always the summer time to visit this popular vacation destination that has it all. We know the ties between the US and the Dominican Republic are among the strongest bilateral relationships for both nations. And the fact that there are more than 2 million Dominicans living in the United States cement this bond. We are also aware that the US president sent a high level delegation to your inauguration this August with a change yes. in US leadership. How do you envision engagement with the United States as part of the new Dominican foreign policy? As I have said in the past, we have a special relation with the United States. We need to have an strategic relation because of the 2 million Dominicans that you mentioned, because uh, it's our most important uh, commercial partner in terms of import and export of our economy, of investment, the, the main amount of tourism coming to the DR. So we have to continue having this a, a very a strategic relations also in security, fighting also a crime, international crime. So what I foresee is continue a, and a, a, a strength, a more strength relationship with the United States. Thank you. As I said before, according to Pew Research Center, there are about 2.2 million Dominicans in the United States. The majority live in New York State, home to NYU. To this amount, you can add the great Dominican diaspora in Europe, especially in Spain. How is your government reaching out to Dominican citizens around the world? Yeah, that's a very good question and that I also can explain. We are preparing the most different, diverse, creative plan to engage the Dominican diaspora. We're gonna maintain all these uh, special uh, condition that they gave to the diaspora to come here uh, during the Christmas time, those, all those everything. But we are preparing a plan to transform and modernize our consulates to give them much better service, a, a service by the digital way. We are gonna, <clears throat> the Institute for uh, Dominicans in the diaspora will create a plan to identify our best assets in the professional fields, in the commercial fields, so that we can establish bridge, a bridge between them and our country. That even they are citizens of the United States, we are gonna tell them that they have a, two countries, that they should have a place in the in the in the US and to be a good citizen there, but also they have a place where their fathers and their grandfathers were born, and that is also a place that they can be. We are gonna be very creative with ideas, having an ex and promoting the best of the Dominican cultures and uh, helping with them also, helping to develop a special niche of business and areas of cultures in the DR. So a very creative, a very different proposal we are going to be presenting 
to the Dominican diaspora, which we cannot be done at this moment, because as you know, the pandemic it creates a lot of limits. Mr. President, and certainly they have no country in the Caribbean to call home. Uh, we always do. We get a few a few questions from the audience. And <coughs> turn to the audience, and I got this first question from uh, Eddie Manuel Sanchez from Asua, my home province, Dominican Republic. And he says, what plan does the Dominican government have to implement its economic and foreign policy while balancing international relations, especially when it comes to hot topics like 5G networks and contracts for operating mega ports? ports. Uh, can you repeat the question, please? Yes, of course. So what plan does the Dominican government have to implement its economic policy and in terms of hot topics like 5G networks and contracts for operating megaports, puertos? Well, we, we already uh, on the 5G, there was not even nobody speaking about 5G before I came to government. We cleared the spectrum needed for the 5G <clears throat> and we were going to be the second country in Latin America after Chile who will make a uh, bidding for the 5G starting on the second week of uh, January. That will be a very open bid to anybody who uh, wants to bid for the 5G. <clears throat> I know that a lot of international companies will participate and that will put us ahead on, on that area. On the mega port, it's on the same thing. For example, the Manzanillo mega port in the North Coast, uh, which is just 24 hours away from the, from the American coast. We are going to do a licitation uh, and, and that uh, big port will also be a, an energy, will, will have a, a energy a generation center, uh, will, will be also a free zones to create jobs. Uh, we'll have uh, also uh, shipbuilding, uh, because the, the economic objectives of this government is to create good, uh, jobs and to create good jobs. So we all these plans are, are going out, all, all these plans, we are working on them with all of them. Thank you, Mr. President. The following questions comes from Francisco Marte, a journalist in Santo Domingo Oeste. He asks, what plan does the government have to reduce spending? We have seen some government institutions eliminated for this purpose. Will there be one? Will there be other actions to follow? It's not to reduce spending; it's to spend well. That's what we are doing. What we are doing is that instead, for example, having an office for the first lady, which will spend a nine hundred million dollars, even if it has good programs that we will follow. <clears throat> we took $230 million from them, and then we started with doing houses for the uh, women who are victims of violence. Uh, we took uh, money from Fomper, which was a, a, a company that received the incomes of the a public, uh, the, 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 the companies where the government had shares and or, or participation, and they were giving that money to different uh, uh, chari uh, charities and supposedly another ONG, which some of them were not even very clear. So we took that money, uh, 2 billion pesos, and then a uh, spend it on that the two million Dominicans who had no health insurance could have it. That's the way we are doing. It's not a spending less, it's a spending well, because still there are a lot of service to be covered in the Dominican Republic. Thank you. And I think uh, we are getting quite a few questions from the audience, but most of these questions are already uh, covered by the president. So, I have another one. This one comes from Allentown in Pennsylvania. 
uh, Maria Alessandria Payano. What immigration policies will be adopted to address the Dominican Republic's challenges with illegal immigration? For that, we just have to fulfill and we have to our immigration law. Our immigration law, it says that everybody who is in the country has to be on a legal way. Either uh, it has to buy a visa for tourism or it has a permit work. And uh, any person who has not, is not on a legal uh, uh, way or form in the Dominican Republic cannot stay like that. And this is uh, just to fulfill and to uh, applicate our immigration law. And that's what we are doing. We just got another one from our campus in Abu Dhabi, uh, super far away, as you know. And this is from a Dominican American student. <coughs> and he asks, is there a way to become politically involved in the country? Can we get connected with Abinadel political team I see some people that some people who already believe in your vision want to stay closer to your plans and your administration. Yes, of course, we are open and uh, we have all our uh, communication opens at the at this moment. Uh, uh, you know, we are a little bit more than than 100 days in power in government, and we are focused on delivering our promises and helping to get out of this crisis and implementing our views to develop and create jobs. Anyhow, anyone who wants to participate in any way or the other in this government, they can communicate with us and we are uh, gonna be open uh, to, uh, to take them to the uh, appropriate sector. Uh, I can give you all the communication uh, centers of our uh, presidency, uh, Giovanni, and you can publish and they can communicate. Absolutely, we can reach out to them and follow up. So uh, someone asks, can you discuss your plans for national development, changes in tourism, infrastructure, and the agricultural sector? I think you have uh, covered uh, a little bit of tourism, but maybe if we can get like a deeper, uh, overview on that. Excuse me, I didn't hear the part, the last part. Sure, I'll repeat it. Can you discuss your plans for national development, changes in tourism, infrastructure, and the agricultural sector? Uh, sometimes uh, on the, the developers in, in, in the past has not been a very open on the matrix of the economy. I think even we are a small island, we have a lot of climates. <clears throat> we have different, we have a, a good mining. We have excellent uh, possibility of tourism. We have a very productive and competitive free zones. Uh, we, we have the most amount of airports in, in uh, per square kilometers. So we have good transportation, good communication, at the same time, good ports in the south, and we will have an excellent port in the north, also for, a, 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 for the commerce. So what we, I want to develop is an economy, which is not just depending on one a factor, it's not in one industry, it's not just depending on tourism. Tourism is an important part of our a, internal product but as well it is free zones. At the same time is the agricultural sector. At the same time it are the service and financial sector. So what we, I want is that all sectors present and some, some ones that are not present in the country, they can develop at the same time. That is very important, Giovanni, because in one, in, in always there is some crisis in some area of the economy. So, that crisis uh, will not hurt uh, very hard the economy if you have a very diverse matrix of industry uh, in your country. And that's what we would like to have. And that's what we are promoting. We are promoting industrialization. We are promoting free zones. We are promoting and trying to recover from tourism. We are promoting 
the agricultural sector. We are taking out all this bureaucracy that just wanted to promote uh, corruption and, uh, and also uh, it took uh, years to make an investment in the Dominican Republic. That we are changing. Uh, that will take us several months to do so, but we are starting to do so. And that will help and, and, and create a lot of new investment. Also, for example, the stock market, we are, we are going to develop the stock market uh, and promote the stock market as never before. Just one company has promoted stocks in the Dominican Republic. We are going to try that in the next months, we should have uh, several companies will do IPOs in our uh, stock market, uh, which uh, will be a, a milestone in our country. So thank you very much, uh, Giovanni. Thank you very much for, uh, for having us. Uh, I will send you all our communication ways. And thank you very much, New York University and, and its people uh, for having this communication. This is the best time to invest in the Dominican Republic. This is the best time to uh, make and to do a new business uh, we are very open for creative and technologies in our country uh, in the next uh, couple of months we will make a very important announcement on promoting uh, technology in in the country and i hope that uh, some people of nru can participate with us in this thank you mr president in conclusion yeah. I would like to thank President Abinader on behalf of NYUDC for today's engaging conversation. Without a doubt, the Dominican Republic is on the rise, a fast growing hub for commerce, trade and tourism with a dynamic, dynamic population of 11 million people living on the island and 2 million people living in the United States. Before we close today, I'd like to invite President Abinader to deliver a message in Spanish to the Dominicans in the diaspora. Sí, muchas gracias, Vicente. Decirle a toda la diáspora dominicana que nosotros nos sentimos muy orgullosos de ustedes. Que ustedes tienen ahora un gobierno que va a construir puentes. Puentes entre ustedes y nosotros como nunca antes. Puentes para que sus hijos conozcan la, las mejores tradiciones de nuestro país. Puentes para que ustedes eh, puedan sentir que tienen dos patrias la patria que los vio nacer a sus hijos y la, a ustedes la patria que los vio desarrollarse, pero también la que los vio nacer y crecer aquí en la República Dominicana. Somos un país que le debemos mucho a la diáspora y por lo tanto queremos a partir de ahora poder pagarles, pagarles a ustedes su apoyo, pagarles a ustedes eh, su solidaridad que en estos meses han aumentado eh, las remesas, que nos ha ayudado bastante, eh, y decirles, esta es su patria. Decirle a la, a la primera generación que los vio nacer, esta es su patria. Y la segunda generación, les vamos a, todos los que quieran ser y tener una doble nacionalidad, van a tener su pasaporte dominicano. Y nosotros se lo daremos con orgullo con orgullo de gente tan buena, de gente que se ha destacado en Estados Unidos y que tiene en el corazón nuestra patria, decirle, te, le vamos a hacer y construir ese puente que va a ayudar a ellos desde el punto de vista personal y hasta de negocios que quieran hacer en nuestro país, pero que al mismo tiempo va a establecer desde el punto de vista de cariño, compromiso con, y nostalgia con el país que los vio nacer a sus padres y a sus abuelos. Los queremos mucho y que Dios los bendiga a todos. Thank you once again to President Abinader for his generous time and insights. Thank you to everyone tuning in today. We hope you have enjoyed this event. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Muchas Thank gracias. you very much.